What's up everyone? Welcome back to ARTV. My name is John and today we're doing a bonus episode of Ranked because normally, as you probably know if you follow this channel, I rank a band or an artist's discography from worst to best, but today I thought I would try out in honor of the 15th anniversary of this legendary record trying to rank every single song on one album from worst to best or in the case of American Idiot by Green Day, from maybe not quite as epic to holy god, this is some of the best music that I'll ever listen to in my lifetime. There's 13 on the standard edition of this record that completes the rock opera, so I'll be going through breaking down why I feel that not only it's one of my personal favorites, but the difference with this ranked episode is that I'm also going to be basing it on how much the song is important to this album. American Idiot was released 15 years ago to the day that I'm releasing this video, September 20th, 2004. Produced by Rob Cavallo, this was Green Day's big comeback. It had so many hit songs on here. It's the record that I got into Green Day with. In fact, it's the album that made me fall in love with music. So I'm forever indebted to it. Let's get started. Remember, I don't dislike in the slightest any songs on this record. So ranking something lower, it doesn't mean that I dislike it. Drop a like on the video, subscribe if you're new, and here we go. While this is still a great song, this is easier for me to skip over without consequence. The tribal drumming in the intro and also the little howl that we get from Billy Joe Armstrong is fantastic. Those are definitely things that make me want to put its name up in lights, but also it is a little bit easy to forget in places at least. I like the music on here, but the lyrics can get a bit monotonous. I think I like the vocal tones and the way that they shape the instrumental. I mean, the guitars are fantastic on this track, but again, something has to land at the bottom, and unfortunately, it's Extraordinary Girl. Let's see, the title track that started a movement and inspired an entire generation coming in this low on the food chain? I know, it's pure blasphemy. Get your pitchforks and torches ready. Honest to God, the title track is a genuinely passionate political protest with memorable and now iconic lyrics and riffs. It's just fallen a little bit more into the background in terms of the cuts that I feel are worthy of coming back to over and over and over again. It's aged well, but maybe not quite as gracefully as some of the other cuts that we're gonna get to. The party before the reality sets in. That's how I've always described the Holiday Boulevard pairing. And I feel that Holiday is this politics-based anthem that everybody loves to shout along to without really knowing its underlying meaning. You know what? If that's how you want to enjoy it, that's totally fine. I don't blame you at all. Take it at face value because it is a buzzing, glorious night out on the town anthem. But if you dig a little bit deeper, then you'll start to see the socio-political commentary. Obviously, the bridge of this track really breaks it down because the megaphone is brought out and then that creeping bass line from Mike Dirt is just so good. It's something that hammers itself into your mind and I love when they play it in concert and they really drag that section out before breaking it back down. I think the chorus is electrifying still. I can see why this connected with a major audience and during the George W. Bush presidency, obviously this was a major protest that went undetected by some Green Day fans apparently because they're like, oh, stop doing political stuff when Trump is president. But I'm like, did you hear this record at all? I'm gonna need some Novocaine stat to take away this sinking feeling inside. That feeling that just tears at me like, how am I even doing this? How am I ranking American Idiot right now? Because this is so difficult. I absolutely love this song, yet it's only coming in at number 10. Give Me Novocaine features this stomping drum rhythm when paired together with Billy's yearning voice that's truly memorable. This is a track that's cut its way into my imagination because it kind of gives you that feeling like you're laying in the dentist chair somewhere and you're like, okay, 
bring on the Novocaine, numb me up, and then you have an out-of-body experience. That's what this song offers. It's something that they truly stepped out of their own comfort zone for. They created something very unique and vivid. And this track, as the years have gone on, I've started to notice and appreciate how they really zeroed in on the things that made American Idiot kind of the perfect record, not only for that time, but also something that would hold up in the years to come, including that soaring, roaring chorus and that electrifying guitar solo. Punk Ripper meet American Idiot. American Idiot meet Punk Ripper. This is one of the most lightning quick, fast songs on the album, but it's also just so punk rock influenced as I already noted. I'm repeating myself, I can't help it, this song is glorious. Here's our anti-hero in all of his booze-soaked glory. The Jesus of suburbia isn't a lie just yet, he's a wild man looking for answers in the metaphorical and literal dark alleys of life. Will he find what he's looking for? Well, let's take a peek behind door number eight next, because the characters keep getting even more compelling as the album goes on. Straightforward, flirtatious, and oddly romantic, she's a rebel sees her old pal Jimmy fighting it out in the mean streets alongside his partner in crime, what's her name? Crunchy guitars, a punk rock attitude, and a short but sweet punch when packaged together as a song, this all comes together and illuminates that rebellious side of all of us. Here, the band capture the perfect forlorn feeling of being in your mid-30s and staring out an office window wondering what could have been if you had stuck with your original motto of rage and love. Instead of that, you got yourself cleaned up, you're wearing a suit and tie, you're in an office pushing papers somewhere, thinking about the life that could have been. You're thinking about what's her name and how has she been at this point. And this song does a great job at showing so much restraint. It's the perfect, and I say the magnum opus of closers, because it takes a slow-moving particle and slowly splits it off, and then it seamlessly bursts into a full-born life form. As my memory rests, but never forgets. Wake Me Up When September Ends is an outlier in the world of American Idiot. There's very little that's put together to connect the dots of our main story here because it isn't meant to do so, at least not really. There's plenty of theories as to how it ties into What's Her Name and Jimmy, but that is really not the core of it all. In fact, this is about Billy's own father in real life passing away and September being an extremely hard time for him. As the years keep moving on, this song just gets sadder and sadder to me. It does a great job at expressing itself, and in fact, this is like the only song that I can actually play on guitar. Yeah, that's all I got. Okay, I'm totally trolling there. Obviously, I can't play the guitar, and that is one of the most simplistic riffs of all time, but at least I patted myself on the back and told myself I did well. Humor is just my way of distracting myself from how distressing this song can be, how utterly sad and gutting it can feel when you listen to it, but it's also extremely therapeutic. Billy Joe lays out this emotional climax for the listener to go on, and the more I hear it, the harder the tears are to hold back. It's one of those songs that can have you welling up, it's melodic, but heartbreaking still. Some of my favorite lyrics on American Idiot lie within Are We The Waiting. The descriptive atmosphere of this track is a bold move for Green Day, at least it was at the time, but I think it opened a lot of doors for them. The slow, almost dry drum movement that opens up this track is a genius way to open up the track, especially when paired together with those sentimental feeling guitars. It really provokes kind of this thoughtful pattern, and it opens up your mind, it expands. Again, some of my favorite lyrics from the record are on this track, especially given that it eventually gives way to St. Jimmy. It's a slowdown before the quick burst. The longest Green Day song to date is also one of their most ambitious and epic tracks that they've ever created. Homecoming wraps up our story, at least the majority of it, in a truly over-the-top, bombastic way, but I wouldn't have it any other way. I think that St. Jimmy, the Jesus of Suburbia, is kind of put to rest here. 
Home, We're Coming Home, the marching band at the end of this track, is just one of several different sections. And Green Day are so good at doing the multi-part songs, they really finessed that and showed that strength, that muscle that they were able to flex on American Idiot, because obviously this is not the only 9 plus minute track here. But on this one in particular, I always found it standing out to me because of the fact that yes, Trey Cool sings on this track and it's truly amazing, but also just the way that they're able to go in and out of these different modes that are very different and take on different genre influences. It's incredible and Green Day showed that they had talent beyond the genre of just punk or pop punk or whatever you wanted to label them as. Between the lines, what's fucked up and everything's all right. This might be my favorite song of all time, but that doesn't mean that I feel that it's the most important track on the record. And I said that yes, my own personal bias and favoritism would play in, but it would also be based on how important and integral I felt the songs were to the concept of the record. This song is fucking flawless, it's a roller coaster ride of emotions for me, but again, not quite the tops. Boulevard of Broken Dreams was the most unique single Green Day had released up to that point in time, but that willingness to step out of the box creatively put them in the driver's seat to guide this song to a totally different level. The choppy layered guitars and the comforting acoustics make this an immersive experience, something that can be, again, confrontational to your emotions like, okay, I didn't ask to be sad and nostalgic and reflective right now, but it's gonna do it to you again and again, and then that guitar solo at the end, if you're not headbanging and soloing along at that point, to let out all of those inner demons, then what are you doing with yourself? Ridiculously earwormy and ever important to the story of the Jesus of Suburbia, this punk-baked flamethrower is a fan favorite for a reason. Letterbomb drops it all on us. It gets high-spirited, high-strung, but the octane never really lets down despite the fact that, again, they're able to switch tempos a few different times. This is a song that grew on me more and more over the years. I never disliked the track, obviously, but I guess I didn't see how important and essential it was until later on in my life. Nothing captures the true spirit and essence of American Idiot quite like the Jesus of Suburbia. Rage and love is a motto that I've always personally felt some sort of connection to. In fact, I've kind of always wanted to get rage and love with like a heart grenade tattooed somewhere on me. Maybe someday that'll happen? This song and the music video that goes along with it truly changed my life, and I don't say that lightly. I don't think that life-changing moments necessarily come along every single month or even every year. But this song and this video spoke to me in such a genuine way at an early age, at just the age of 13. I started to see things a different way. It opened my mind a little bit to the fact that there is this outside world, outside of the bubble that I had been forced to live in. I grew up in a very religious household, and obviously Jesus of suburbia. Jesus isn't meaning what Jesus meant to me at that time. And our character on this track goes on this long journey. And that's further shown and elevated by the music video, but again, this track stands alone without its visual companion piece as just a solid gold bar that's offered up as a sacrifice to our ears. And that's all she wrote. That's how I would rank American Idiot from worst to best. What did you think of my list and how would you do your own list? Sound off in the comment section down below. Drop a like on this video while you're here to support this series ranked. Other than that, keep in mind that it's all just my opinion. Obviously, no one is right or wrong here. This record means more to me than I could ever express in words. So thank you, Green Day. Thank you so much for the music over the years, and thank you for this album. If you'd like to help support the channel on Patreon, then hit the annotation over here in the corner, or else the top link in the description down below. All of my Green Day-themed videos can be found in this playlist here, or if you want to catch up on more episodes of Ranked, and if you want to see more like this in the future, then let me know in the comments and also tap this card. I'll see you soon for more right here on ARTV.